Greetings and welcome to worship on this Reformation Sunday at Greenfield Avenue Presbyterian Church. I am Reverend Dr. Bruce Jones. I'm the interim pastor here and welcome you to worship, whether it's on YouTube or Facebook. We are glad you are joining us. I want to remind you that we are doing a collection for Wilson School Supplies. Check Friday notes for the details. Also, we are collecting money for no luncheon uh, to support our peace and justice missions. Normally we would have a luncheon, uh, ask you to make a donation for the meal. We just want to have you make a donation to that so we can continue to support the worthy causes that peace and justice does, for, like at St. Ben's and the Good Samaritan uh, Center. Please listen for the gathering music that Sherry Mazakowski is doing. Our prayer for meditation today is from John Calvin. It is a portion of a full length prayer that he has done. Uh, he had four daily prayers. This is part of one of them.
Good morning, please join me for the call to worship. Let us start this service well by remembering we stand in the reformed tradition. We are called to be reformed and always reforming according to the word of God. The Holy Spirit inspires us to renew our minds and be transformed. We seek the mind of Jesus Christ. The Spirit moves us to love God, our neighbors and ourselves. We come to worship God with compassion and justice. Our first hymn this morning is hymn number one, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. commandments. It's a simple saying that requires our constant vigilance to live. Unfortunately, Jesus came to offer us forgiveness for our failure when we've not kept God's commandments or loved our neighbor as ourselves. Let us join in our unison prayer of confession. Eternal God, we confess that we tend to take your 10 commandments and downgrade them to suggested rules. We have criticized those who have fallen short and selfishly proclaimed ourselves righteous. Forgive us for turning your law into burdens for others and ourselves instead of a way to love and freedom in you. In the name of Jesus Christ, who has given us the way and leads us on, we pray. 
Forgive us when we fail to understand the spirit of the law and the way that was shown by you to live. Loving God and loving our neighbors. Free us for joyful obedience to your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear now God's assurance of forgiveness. But when the goodness and loving kindness of God, our Savior, appeared, he saved us, not because of any works of righteousness that we had done, but according to the Lord's mercy, through the water of rebirth and renewed by the Holy Spirit. Hear the good news. You are loved. Know that in God's love there is forgiveness, healing, and reconciliation. I declare in the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. When God loves you, you can love others. When you know the peace of Christ, you can bless your neighbors with this spiritual peace. May the peace of Christ be with you and also with you. Please share the peace of Christ with everyone you meet. Be intentional in spreading God's grace and peace to our community. Even as we maintain physical distance, please remain socially connected. We prepare our hearts to listen to the word of the Lord, recorded in scripture through our prayer for illumination. We seek the spirit of wisdom in prayer. Lord, we pray for illumination of your word and that you would open my eyes to the truth of the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. We seek the spirit of wisdom and understanding to open our hearts to guide us in the direction you would have me go. Illumine my heart with a deeper awareness of your precious word and give me the grace to love you more and serve you better in the place where you have placed me. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Our first reading this morning is from uh, First Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 1 through 8. This is about Paul's ministry in Thessalonica. Please listen carefully to the word of God. You yourselves know, brothers and sisters, that our coming to you was not in vain, but though we had already suffered and been shamefully mistreated at Philippi, as you know, we had courage in our God to declare to you the gospel of God in spite of great opposition. For our appeal does not spring from deceit or impure motives or trickery, but just as we have been approved by God to be entrusted with the message of the gospel, even so we speak not to please mortals, but to please God who tests our hearts. As you know, and as God is our witness, we never came from words of flattery or with a pretext for greed, nor did we seek praise from mortals, whether from you or from others, though we might have made demands as apostles of Christ. But we were gentle among you like a nurse tenderly caring for her own children. So deeply do we care for you that we are determined to share with you not only the gospel of God, but also our own selves, because you have become very dear to us. So ends the first reading. And now, please enjoy the special music, the chancel choir and orchestra, along with guests Holy Cross Lutheran Choir in Menominee Falls, and this is under the direction of Michael Jacklin, Minister of Music. Enjoy.
Action, action, we want action, A-C-T, I-O-N, action, action. Not going to do the same. Last week, we looked at A-C-T of action, and I'm going to complete the I-O-N this week with our cheer. So how well did you pay attention last week? Here's the little quiz, A for attention to our surroundings, C to copy and imitate Christ-like behavior, and T, to transcend our human failures with the power of God. We will continue in Paul's letter to the church in Thessalonica. With He turns a little bit more of the sheepdog nipping at their heels, but still with compassion as he helps them lead into Reformation. This is Reformation Sunday, and we remember the 16th century Reformation. Our ancestors in faith challenged the status quo. They had paid attention to the faith leaders at the time, and there was not much worth copying. And they set into motion a great Reformation through connections with the transcendent God as revealed by the Holy Spirit in Scripture. And they call us to pay attention to these reforms to copy their example, and to continue to reconnect to God, transcendent power in Scripture. As the Apostle Paul shared his message of Reformation, he shares his own experience of persecution in Philippi to connect with the Thessalonians that they are enduring now this persecution that Christians are not necessarily well received. And so he connects with his audience with empathy understanding their situation, and then he provides his motives not to please humans, but to please God. In his ministry, his motives are purely authentic and approved by God above when he can come to them with great compassion because he knows where he has been, and he loves them dearly as children in the faith. The apostle Paul also packs a bit of a punch. In a few words, he takes 
it takes us time to unpack and apply it to our lives. I could probably preach three or four weeks on this one passage, but I won't. But you will take a little bit and nibble and chew on it and digest it and ruminate on it and then maybe come back for seconds and thirds and study the word of God. I can imagine Paul as he's writing this letter that he's thinking about Jesus and the story that is circulating at the time in the oral tradition that it recorded for us in scripture, the gospel according to St. Matthew, the 22nd chapter. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together and one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? And Jesus replied, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Matthew 22, 34 to 46. We are to love God with our whole heart, soul, and mind. And when we do, when we take this message to heart, we become reformed and transformed because Christ becomes our priority, the first in our life. And when God reforms our hearts, we gather with other Christians to love our neighbors as ourselves. Christians honor God with our service to our community as we share God's love. So as we continue our Reformation cheer, I-O-N, Reformation begins with I, me, myself, and I. It's an, as an individual Christian, I need to look at myself. Then as a group of individuals who are Reformed, we become part of an organization, the church. And as a Reformed organization, we gather with empathy to love our neighbors. So we shall apply our ACT, with our ION. And the great reformation begins with a self-examination. We allow the spirit to convince or convict us of our motives. The apostle Paul has examined and allowed the spirit to examine his heart because God tests the heart. He examines his motives for purity and not trickery that others use to deceive and lead people astray. Each week in reformed worship, we include a prayer of confession with time for personal reflection and examination. And I often tell people if that pause is too long for you, maybe you need to examine yourself a little bit more. If that pause and your list goes on, maybe you've had a bad week. Some use this confession practice in their own lives as individuals in their personal prayer daily to come humbly before God. For Christ calls us to examine our individual hearts for sincerity and minds for pure motives. Sometimes we are good at this process of individual reform. And other times we need a little help from our friends, the organization, fellow Christians who can help us, encourage us and correct us and guide us as the body of Christ the gathered group of believers, we can work together to reform ourselves as individuals to make the body of Christ more healthy. Then as the body of Christ, we work together as reformed individuals to reform the organization. One of my roles as interim minister is to help the congregation, particularly through working with your elected leaders, the session at Greenfield Avenue to examine the organization and its system. How do you perform different ministry tasks? Why do you do them? Have you done them the same way for the last 20, 30, 50 years? Or is this a time and space to try new ideas and ask the question, why do we do it? Is there a purpose? Is there something more we can be doing? It can be small incremental change or can be major seismic shifts so that your new called and installed pastor can continue to guide you and to grow a healthy congregation. In our current COVID challenges, we have not started doing a mission study, but we will, where you examine and explore GAPC's ministry 
we will get there and we will look for the past of things that we've done well that have brought health and wholeness to the organization. We explore what makes GAPC important and maybe even indispensable for our West Alice neighborhood. And we will cast our eyes to the future for vitality and viability and potentially what more can we do to reach neighbors near and far. A healthy organization can impact our neighborhood for Christ. When individuals reformed Christians join together as an organized body of Christ, together God will use us to reform our neighborhood. We can reach out in genuine and authentic Christian love to spread the good news of Jesus. This is loving God with our whole heart and our neighbors as ourselves. The Reformation begins with me, myself, and I. It continues as an organization working as the body of Christ, the church, reformed and always reforming according to the word of God. And together we will reform our neighborhood with God's consistent and constant love and grace. To God be the glory. Amen. Our next hymn is 686, God of Our Life. gather as the body of Christ in prayer. God, you are the Alpha and the Omega. You are here before us, before anything existed, and you will be here when everything and everyone comes to an end here on earth. We are happy. We are happy, O oh God, because our hearts are full of your grace and your love. Your ways are not our ways but you have shared your spirit with us to aliven us 
to the world around us. Happy are we, O oh God, when our lives are guided by your delight. We gather here before you, a holy God. We gather to draw together and to be more together than we are individually, together as a community of faith, even as we worship remotely, you connect us together and we walk with you because you walk with us. You created us and know everything we do, good, bad, and ugly, for you are greater than us and you understand us more completely than we understand ourselves. And as we gather together as the body of Christ, we remember those affected by the wildfires, the hurricanes, the flooding, and the COVID-19, and joblessness in our community and in our country. We pray for those who are impacted as members of our body of Christ, friends of Sue Pope's, her neighbor who husband died of COVID. We pray for Jan and for God's comfort in this time of sorrow. We give thanks with Barb Brunette at her medical procedure and that she is whole. We pray for her recovery. We pray for Bobby Griffin for strength that she continues her therapy and recuperates. We pray for our country and our leaders in this time a political upheaval, the season of debating and voting. We pray that your will can change and transform and reform our world. We pray for emergency workers and medical professionals working long shifts to be an extension of your healing power in our community. We pray for our nominating committee as they do the work of your church seeking new leaders. We pray for Marge, Sue and Larry's friend who broke her hip and for her husband, Jim, and pray for an extension of your healing grace in her lives through her doctors. And also for the family of Pat, Sue and Larry's neighbor who died this week, comfort for them in this time of grief. We lift our voice as Christ our teacher taught our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Jesus invites you to respond with humility and generosity to the precious gift of life. As we accept God's grace, let us be instruments of the Lord's peace in our community with our morning offering. We offer our gifts with gratitude and grateful hearts for the Lord's work in our community. Let us dedicate this week's gifts with prayer. Great and awesome God, we praise you as we give you our tithes and offerings. May these gifts presented for the ministry of this church build your kingdom and to nurture us spiritually. May it be used to support missions around the world. May it be used in our local community for those who need a helping hand. Bless the ministries these offerings support. Amen. And our final hymn this morning is number 644, Give Thanks, O Christian People.
years of our day, who heed the call to service and make it their life's way to go to feed the hungry, to tend to those in need, to work for equal justice till all God's folk are freed. Give thanks, O Christian people, for leaders of our years who live to share with others our joy when Christ appears. To teach the ones who seek light to guide the faltering feet, to lead the flowers forward, our living Lord to meet. Give thanks, O Christian people, for leaders of our years who live each day. eternal word to share Christ's love in living to witness with each deed to use the talents given to plant the gospel seed give thanks O Christian people for in fellowship with all who trust our Savior, they're serving to equip to seize another's burdens, to hope in joy and stress, to magnify God's message. Christ's great love confess. Go out into the world and put your faith in action. Attentive, copy, transcendent, individual, organizational, and neighborhood. Go out and be reformed and always reforming according to the word of God. Reform yourself, reform the church, and reform the world to the glory of God. Receive the benediction. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with you this day and forevermore. Hallelujah. Amen.